This video is an overview of SonicWall Endpoint Security Solution, Capture Client. We will cover its antivirus capabilities, as well as going through the features I personally appreciate, like the content filtering, the endpoint control, as well as the application risk. As pretty much every single video I've done in the past, I'm trying to do interesting demos along the way. And this video was quite a challenge to me, simply because Capture Client is designed to be a next-gen antivirus behavior-based engine designed to block zero-day malware never seen before threat, as well as malware cocktail, like Bill Corner, President and CEO, calls them. So that was quite a challenge to me to come up with such a piece of software, but I think I nailed it and I think Bill will qualify it as being a malware cocktail because what I've done, I've took a old ransomware, Tesla Crypt, inject some remote shell payload into it and recompile the thing three times to make sure it is totally brand new and never seen before. So make sure that you stick around until the end to see this thing in action. Hi, I'm Jean-Pierre Talbot, SC for SonicWall in Canada, helping customer and reseller get the most out of their network security solution. If you're new here, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. And all the link to the content I'll mention will be in the description box down below. So let's get started. Capture Client is designed to replace the antivirus you have on your machine. And Capture Client gets its antivirus capabilities coming from two powerful monsters. The first one being Sentinel-1. Sentinel-1 is a behavior-based antivirus that looks for behavior. So what that means is when you open a PDF or run any file, it is not going to load 100s of million of virus signature and trying to find a match in your file. No, what it will do will simply look at what's going on on your machine once you click that PDF or run that file. We'll look at processes, services, registry key, file being created, modified, deleted, network traffic, and so on. So that makes it a much more efficient engine, as well as being much more lightweight. Second powerful monster is Capture ATP, and that one would deserve a video on its own, so I'll try to be quick here. The core of Capture ATP is its deep learning algorithm, the machine learning, the brain you see in the middle here. Like any brain, it needs information to learn. The more you give it, the smarter it gets. And SonicWall is part of the lucky manufacturer to have a large footprint in the network security space with firewall, Wi-Fi, cloud product for AWS, Azure, Office 365, G Suite, a work from home appliance, traditional email solution, and endpoint. All those are feeding information to that master brain. Capture ATP can also leverage 62 well-known antivirus on top of multiple sandbox engine. Cause quite frankly, one sandbox is not enough anymore because malware writer are writing their malware to, a to appear benign in a sandbox. So maybe they will manage to fool one of our sandbox, but the other sandboxes won't get fooled because they're based on different sandboxing technologies. And at the end, the final result is feed to that master brain again. And now the fun part. Let's see how Capture Client works with those two powerful monsters with demos along the way. So the first step is pre-execution. So everything you've put on whitelist, blacklist, as well as known threat. So if Sentinel-1 or Sentinel-1 Cloud Intelligence knows that a file is dangerous, then it removes it. That simple. So let's give this a try. Let's put a known virus and see how that pre-execution works. Okay, here I am going to use Tesla Crypt. This is a five years old ransomware. And so here I'm just clicking on it. As you can see, Chrome is interfering and say, hey, this is bad. And we also got capture client that detect the malware. As you can see in the dashboard, we do have suspicious activity detected. And it came back to green because no threat were found. Everything got removed. Now let's see the management interface of Capture Client. Let's go into the list of threat that we've seen. And let's click on the latest one, which is my temporary download that uh, Chrome prevented me from having my complete file. 
As you can see in the bottom here, we do see that it is the Sentinel-1 cloud reputation that prevented this file. And we can click on the virus total link and we can see that, you know, this is well known. It still surprises me that 9 antivirus out of 70, roughly 12% of antivirus still today don't know about this 5 years old ransomware. Okay, I must admit, that one was easy, there is nothing very exciting and hard in blocking a 5 years old threat. So let's push this a bit further. If Sentinel-1 has never ever seen a file before, it's going to look at the file attribute and if it sees some packaging and coding and other suspicious and weird file attribute, it's going to send that file to Capture ATP. Remember Capture ATP, that machine learning brain with 62 antivirus engine, multiple sandbox engine. So we will send the file there. So let's see this in action. But first, I need a brand new shiny piece of malware. So let's create this. Okay, here we do have Kelly Linux and I am typing a command that I found on the web because I'm a good script kitty. I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just typing a command that I found. So you will find the link in the description box down below. But roughly what I'm doing, I'm taking TeslaCrypt, the file that we've played with a minute ago that is well known by pretty much everything worldwide as being a ransomware. So I'm taking this file, I will inject a remote shell from Metasploit, which is stuff on Kelly Linux. So it's a remote shell to gain remote access on a machine. And I will merge those two together and recompile that file three times to make sure it looks different and no one have seen this file before. So as you can see, it was a, an extensive amount of work on my side. I believe that command is about three lines long. So that's a pretty, pretty incredible amount of work on my side. So uh, with the magic of video editing, I will just move forward. And as you can see, at the end, I end up with Tesla Crypt NG NG for next generation because, well, it's Tesla Crypt NG created by myself. Okay, now we have a brand new shiny malware cocktail. So let's see how Capture Client react to this. Okay, so now let's move ahead and download Tesla Crypt NG. And as you can see, Chrome didn't complain this time. And now the capture client is looking at this file with Sentinel-1 Cloud Intelligence and it won't come back with anything. I will pause here. See, I love the message from capture client. See, it's saying capture ATP analyzing access block. That means that, of course, Sentinel-1 didn't know about this file because I just created it minutes ago. And now capture, a, capture client is sending that file to capture ATP, that machine learning thing that I've talked about. And with the 62 AV engine, the multiple sandbox engine. So the file has been sent over there to be analyzed. And while this is performed, access to that local file on my machine has been blocked. So I love the messaging and I love the action it takes. Okay, let's go back into the management interface of Capture Client and click on that new threat that just showed up. As you can see at the bottom here, we do see that the file has been sent to deep file inspection because it was deemed suspicious. And you can see on the right what are the file attributes that made it suspicious. Here in the middle, we do see that it's been qualified as a malware and that Capture ATP Verdict is currently looking at this file. Here we can also click on Virus Total and we can see that this file has never been seen before. Next, we can scroll down and we can see that currently one sandbox engine found it to be malicious and we have another one that is currently looking into it. And our client is back to be green because the file was considered to be suspicious on the pre-execution aspect. So the file got deleted from my system. Pretty exciting to see capture client in action with a never seen before threat. And the best of all, everything you saw so far is purely on pre-execution. Now let's move on to on execution. So again, if a file shows up, Capture Client will check with Sentinel-1 Cloud Intelligence. If it's never seen before and the file attributes looks weird, we will send it to Capture ATP for analysis. And if Capture ATP give us a thumbs up, 
it's clean, no viruses, then we're done with the pre-execution aspect. So the file will stay on your machine. Then once you open or run this file, the on-execution aspect will kick in. Then we will look at all services, processes, registry key, file, network traffic, everything. As much as I tried, I never ever managed to defeat Capture ATP with its multi-engine sandbox to go through the pre-inspection stage. So in order for me to move ahead to be able to show you the on-execution aspect, I had to cheat. So what I did, I simply disabled Capture ATP. So here is what's going to happen. The file will show up on the hard drive, Capture Client will check with Sentinel-1 Cloud Intelligence and they will not have any verdict for it because again, it's a never seen before malware cocktail that I just created. And Capture Client will not be able to send it to Capture ATP because I turn it off. So here just pretend that I'm overly smart and I created a ransomware that appeared benign to SonicWall machine learning, also to 62 AV engine as well as multiple sandbox engine, right? I am that smart. So now we're done with the pre-execution aspect. So the file will stay on my machine. So I'll be able to run this file. We'll see the on-execution aspect kick in and capture client to save the day. So you ready? Let's do this. Okay, so let's run this file and because it's my own shiny new virus, I want it to have a fair chance. So let's run it as admin. Yes, let me run the thing. Yes, I said yes, run the thing. And as you can see, capture client kicks in, delete my shiny new virus. I can click on that message here. It opens Capture Client. I can click on the dashboard and see that suspicious activity have been detected. So now let's switch to the management interface of Capture Client. Let's look at the threat list. Click on the latest one, my Tesla Grip NG. As you can see, we do have multiple files, even a file that I don't know about. I'm not the one created that thing. So let's click on my Tesla Grip NG. As you can see here, dynamic behavior tracking. So it really shows we were on execution. So we were not on pre-execution. So that was tracking behavior on that specific machine. I can click on network connection and it will show me all network connections that were made because of that file and any, any other file created by it. I do have here a attack overview showing me high level of things that have been played with registry keys and what's not. The part I like the most is the attack storyline. So you can click on the advanced view so you can see more information of what have been done. One file created another file which created another process. So each virus will have their own activity. You can click on other file as well. So it will show you every single file that have been touched, created, deleted and everything. Everything again can be clicked. So if I click on Tesla Crypt NG, it shows me that two processes started from because of it. And it also shows some attributes. So very legit thing to do, right? The software deleted itself, right? They all do that, right? When you start Microsoft Word, it deletes itself. That's very legit. And here, different files that have been created, modified, uh, wrote to and different uh, details and also their location as well. And you can click the other file here, as you can see it played with plenty of files, also created a registry key and the techies watching this will find that location funny. It's the well-known place to put something so that this software start every time the machine reboots. And you can click on attack data. So here we have the entire list of files that have been created, deleted, modified. And of course, capture client made sure that those were back to the state they were before. Then we do have the other stuff registry here, which is the registry key I showed you a couple seconds ago. Every single processes with their argument that have been started. And network connectivity, interesting point that virus again is five years old i just recompiled it but at the end it's still a five years old ransomware and as you can see it's still it it was leveraging https connection right port 443 so make sure you turn on the pi ssl on your firewall 
and I can move all the way up and I can download a threat report as a PDF, which will pretty much give me the information you saw here, but in a nice PDF format that you can send to management or to uh, your customer if you are a reseller. So it's going to give information about it. Where is that file? Who was the user? What were the indicator on the pre-execution aspect? The attack story view, pretty much the same data you saw on the web page in a nice PDF. That is impressive. I love that UI. It really shows that we're into the behavior based analysis. And next is the response aspect that will show you the attack storyline that you just saw and also be able to mitigate, remediate, and even roll back a machine to its previous state if you ever need to. You can also remotely disconnect a machine from the network if you want to. Capture Client is much more than a crazy good antivirus. It also has other cool features like content filtering where you can block access to different websites. That is very useful when your users are not in the corporate network like home or at the hotel, airport or wherever they want. So you can ensure that questionable website will not work as well as some websites that are known to be dangerous. And of course we can log everything and you can access that information in the UI of the management interface of Capture Client. Device control is another one that I really like. It allows you to block access to different Bluetooth or USB devices. The most common one is to prevent anyone from plugging a USB mass storage in a corporate laptop. And my favorite one is the application risk. Capture Client will look at all software you have installed on all the machines and will actually give you a report saying, hey, this application on that machine has this vulnerability and give you the CVE number with a link to an external website telling you exactly what it is. Chances are it will say, well, update to put this patch or update to this version. So this is key to network security, right? If you don't patch system that have vulnerability, well, you're exposing yourself. It's pretty much asking for trouble. So a lot of company will charge a lot of money to generate you those type of report and you get that free of charge with Capture Client Advanced. So I really like that functionality of Capture Client. And finally, Capture Client is sold with two different licenses. There's the basic and the advanced. I would personally suggest you to go with the advanced because it gives you Capture ATP, that thing I never managed to defeat, as well as all the cool features I just talked about. And also Capture Client is compatible with those operating system. So thanks for watching. I really hope you appreciated. Capture Client is offered in trial free of charge for 30 days on 10 machines. So give it a try and let me know and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.